Simply the best. Can any of you remember who sang that song in the 1960s? Well, it was Tina Turner. She sang Simply the Best. Do you remember it? You may remember it. And um, this song has been used by various sports people as they compete. And there was a guy called Chris Eubank, and he was a super middleweight boxer of his time. And he was, in his day, the best super middleweight boxer in the world. So when he used to jump into the ring, this was blasted out, and it was quite right, because it conveyed what he was at the time. If I was to ask you today, not who's the best boxer, but who do you think the best? Who do you think the best person in the world is? Well, I suppose you'd have different answers, wouldn't you? Um, the best person in the world. Some people might say, well, you know, Mother Teresa, she did a, a great job when she was alive helping desperately poor people in Calcutta. Other people might say uh, Martin Luther King or other people who, who championed um, the, the downtrodden and the marginalized. Um, I can think of people that made tremendous advances in medicine. I mean, I suffer from cancer at times. And I'm very glad for people, for surgeons who have got great far skills more than me, who are able to help me. And people have, have made explorations, advances in, in science, haven't they? And in space. We live in a very different world to 50 years ago. So these people have certainly made an impact, and I think they should be credited with that. But the person I'm speaking about is head and shoulders above all these people. Because this person wasn't proud, and yet wherever he gathered, wherever he spoke, people always gathered. He gave sight to the blind, he healed people, he spoke up against injustice, and um, he, people tried to trip him up, but he always gave the right answer. He wasn't proud, or he wasn't conceited, and yet people gathered and they said, no one ever spoke like this man. And he had a group of about 12 people that went round with him for about three years, and one of them said about this man, he committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. Now, could you say that about yourself? Can I say that about myself? No, no way. If we're honest, we've all sinned, we've all done wrong, haven't we? Perhaps we've told a lie, or we've envied, or we've used God's name as a swear word, or we've got angry that due course, or we don't obey our parents, we don't obey the authorities, we pay most of our taxes, but not all of it. Well, who who's, pays 100% taxes today anyway? But you see, the fact of the is we've all broken God's laws. And because of that, there's a barrier between us and him. He loves us, but he doesn't love the wrong we do. But Jesus of Nazareth never sinned, so he qualified to be the best person who ever lived. What about the best What about the best love that's ever been demonstrated? Now there's been lots of acts of selfless love over the years. Um, during the war, um, I, I've heard tales of true tales of mothers risking their lives to get their children or loved ones out of a burning building. And, and real love is not what you hear about in the pop songs. That, that's selfish love. Real love is selfless love. In fact, there was a the Help the Aged, the charity. One of the treasurers used to say, loving is giving. That's absolutely true, isn't it? So, real love is giving love. It costs you. It costs you money, it costs you time, it costs you energy. It might cost you your reputation. It might cost you even your freedom. But, you know, the greatest love ever demonstrated was by this one person I'm speaking about. Jesus 
died on that cross, not for people who were good, but for people who were, were bad, who were, were sinful, like you and me. The Bible says some people might even die for a righteous person, but God shows his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Would you die for people who were bad? I, I certainly wouldn't. But Jesus died for people for, like you and me who are sinful as the only way that we could be made right with God. So we're talking about the best person who ever lived, demonstrating the greatest love the world has ever known. And what about this? Every day, our life is made up. Of events, isn't it? Lots of events go on every week, every month, and further. And what's the greatest event that you've encountered? Well, I'm not a football man, but a lot of people were waxing lyrical about two years ago when England won the Women's Euro, you know, that they were pretty happy bunnies then. And um, there's all sorts of other happy events going on, and that's good. But let me ask you, what would be the worst event for people? Well, whatever beliefs, whatever lifestyle you live, I would say that death must be one of the worst events ever for people, because it affects you. I've got a good friend back in Bridlington. He lost his wife after over 50 years. And he'll feel it. You know, some people say, oh, well, time's a great healer. Ha, ah, is it? Is it? I know people who have lost loved ones, and they feel it acutely every day. But the lovely thing is that Jesus of Nazareth conquered death. Not once, but a number of times he said that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Jesus was physically raised to life the third day. We're not talking about some mystical presence. We're talking about a bodily resurrection from the dead. And because Jesus rose from the dead and conquered death, that's good news for us. Because whoever trusts in him, we too will conquer death in the sense that we'll be acceptable to God because of trusting in Christ. So we've got the best person that ever lived, demonstrating the greatest love and the greatest event that he conquered death by dying and then rising again. A lot of people today going up and down the high street are looking for offers, bargains, and, and I hope you get them. Uh, my wife and I, we look for them as well, you know. But I agree with you. Cheers. Amen. Bye -bye. God bless you. But the greatest offer ever is this. God promises to transfer us from sinful, selfful beings to new beings in Christ if we put our trust in him. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. So the question today is not, are you religious? Are you a Christian? Do you know you're right with God? Do you know you're going to heaven instead of hell when you die? Do you know that? Because one day you will stand before God and give an account of your life to God as I will. And only through trusting in Jesus are we made acceptable to God now and certainly for heaven. So thank you for listening, and I do trust you'll think very seriously about these things.